Hi, I'm John. Uh, I'm going to show you something about templates that's neat the first time you see it, but it's a bit like a magic trick if you've seen it before. It's obvious. So I work at Nanopore. We make DNA sequences that you can take to a farm, to an international space station. I love this slide. Right, so we've got a point class, and we want to store some data alongside the point class. So we start off with a point. Lovely. Want to add some arbitrary data. Template. Beautiful. What if we only sometimes want to store the data? Well, we can try writing point with empty angle brackets. No, don't like it. We can try writing point of void. No, don't like it. We can make our own empty struct, and that works, but then we have to write an additional struct, which isn't very good. The user has to write an additional struct. So we make a template specialization. We've got point of void. Got lots of duplicated code, and no T. All works. Beautiful. So extract, standard refactoring, extract the common code. We've got point base, which looks very much like the point class that we had before. We've got a point that has a T in it. And we've got a specialization with no T in it. And it's just the same as point base. So it is the same as point base. And logically, anywhere that you use a point of void, you can also use a point of T as well. Which means, if we define the specialization point of void, this is the bit that looks a bit weird. You can inherit from point of void in your base definition. I was surprised when I first wrote this and it actually compiled. Uh, this is a bit like curious returning template pattern. It's neat once you've seen it. What if you want to store multiple values? So we define the same trick again. We've got a point, we've got our base class. And this time we can have empty angle brackets because zero is a num valid number of arguments in template parameter pack. Then we now inherit effectively from ourselves in the partial specialization. Again, it works. You kind of go down the number of parameters until you hit the base case, and then you come back up again. So then we want to do some more refactoring. We extract just the data storage part. And then before you know what's happening, you've got a tuple. Woo! You can do standard get if you want. But to be honest, if you want to store multiple arguments of arbitrary type, just put a tuple in. Thank you.